Okay, we're going to get quiet and do this meditation. So we just relax right where we're at. Release, relax, and let go. Just allow the chair to fully support your weight. You may want to close your eyes. Focus on the breath. Just notice how it works. And as you breathe in, you're filled. And as you breathe out, just naturally relax. And the breath is a symbol for Christmas. It's a symbol for life. It's a symbol of receiving and giving. So on the in-breath, we receive the gift of life. And on the out-breath, we give the gift of love. Say to yourself, I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission. I have some gifts to give. There are these great talents and abilities in me that it is my mission to give away. These are the aspects of my divinity. My talents and abilities. My gifts. My gifts received. My gifts to give. They are not my personality, but rather they are my temporary individuality. Every day, these talents try to make themselves known. They want to come out in all sorts of kind and generous ways. So today I will allow those pieces of myself to be known in the world. I will allow them to contribute to my life and to the lives of those around me. I have a sense that as I practice, they will become stronger and more developed. These are the gifts that God has given me. I will make a gift to God of them in their practice. I'm on a mission.
my mission is to allow my gifts to come forth and bless others. Amen. So it's Christmas, Christ Mass. It means to celebrate the Christ. Um, it actually didn't mean, doesn't really mean to celebrate, to actually celebrate Jesus Christ. Though Jesus Christ is a very important part of the story of the Christ. But um, as we've said before, some of you might not have heard it, but the fact is that Jesus' name was not Jesus Christ from the Christ family down the street. His name, actually, what they called him there was Jesus, son of Mary. You say, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. In a patriarchal society, that is not a good name to have. Okay? I, just, I want to paint the picture because this is the truth. This is not a good name to have because what they were saying when they called him Jesus, son of Mary, it meant that the people in the town did not know who his father was. If you remember the story, you can fig kind of figure that out. What I mean, what the deal? Joseph was the head of the household, but they didn't call him Jesus, son of Joseph. So in other words, it was actually, uh, 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 I wouldn't say it's a slight. It was like they were saying this is the reality of it is that he is the son of this woman who uh, obviously was with some other man other than her now husband, and that's and the result is Jesus. Uh, so, uh, so you think about that in context with the life that would have occurred as a child growing up, and it was a burden. So his his name actually what they called him in the town was actually a burden to carry. And, but what ended up happening with this child was that. He became the Christ. He exemplified the Christ. And here's what it means, by the way. Christos, it's, a Greek, it's Greek, and it means the anointed one. It, or it just means the anointed. Uh, also, the secondary meaning is Messiah. And Messiah means, uh, literally means, leader out of something, right? I mean, it's just a, a, someone who leads you out of. And uh, so this Messiah idea is that by establishing the Christ consciousness, by, by becoming, and this is what, what we think and what we've seen is that Jesus was probably the only one to come into this full Christ consciousness in perfection. Like we don't know of any, we don't know of anyone else who has, I mean, some people say, the, the Buddha, and then maybe perhaps, but we know that this that, that what happened was this man, Jesus, became that which was within him all along. And the, and the basis for this is what Paul's writings uh, pa concerning this, what Paul writes about it is, he says, Christ in you, your hope of glory. And this has been all totally twisted out of shape to, to have people thinking that you need Jesus to jump into you for you to be glorious. And uh, there's not enough room in your body for that to happen. And of course, okay, we're talking about spirit, but what's really what he's talking about, because if you read the passage that comes before, he says, I'm going to tell you a secret. Paul says, I mean, and this is in every Bible, not just in some translations, he says, let me tell you a secret that has been hidden for ages and generations. Christ in you, your hope of glory. That's the whole statement. So the secret is that for ages, which by the way, an age is a thousand years, and a generation is what, 20 years? That's a generation. So now when Paul's writing this, it's 40 years after the, the crucifixion resurrection event. So it's, so it's not a thousand years later. So he's not talking about Jesus. 
He's talking about the Christ consciousness, and this has been totally misinterpreted, and, and scholars know it, but it's totally misinterpreted. He's talking about the Christ consciousness. He says, it's been in you, and is, but is hidden for ages and generations, and it is your hope of glory. And then a little further on, he says, let the mind that was in Christ Jesus be in you. So obviously he's not, he's, so again, it's not talking about this. He, so he's saying, really, mind, what's he talking about? He's talking about a way of thinking. He's talking about, so this is, this is, this is the, the whole thrust of it is to allow this secret that has been in us for thousands of years and generations to come into its own. And Christmas represents the awakening. It represents, the, it represents this divinity within us coming awake. So we symbolize it as the newborn child. We symbolize it, and, and, and Jesus as a baby symbolizes that same thing. Not just, though, a child, but it's important because there's the this, this symbol is important to like get the whole progress of the thing is it's an infant in you, it will grow. So, the, so this Christ consciousness is born in you, and with practice and experience, it grows into, into its fullness. It's not in its fullness when it's an infant. It grows. And, th and then the other part of the symbol is the innocence of the infant. So both of these things are very important for this idea of this Christ consciousness. That the, the Christ consciousness starts as innocence, but it stays innocent. It grows, it permeates our life, but it stays innocent. And when I say innocent, I mean it sees no sin. It sees no error. It sees only the perfection of spirit. So here, now look, you know, we're talking about some Christmas here. We're celebrating the Christ. We're celebrating this divine part of us, which is really the only real part of us, that will, we can allow, by putting our attention on it, for it to be born anew in us at Christmas and celebrate that whole sense of divinity. Now, so, so when Paul says, let the mind be in you that's in Christ Jesus, thinking about mind as being thinking, so that, and this is just one aspect of it. There's a number of other directions you can go with this statement, but to say that in order for me to experience this Christ consciousness, I need to think like Jesus thought when he was exemplifying this Christ spirit, right? Which So the way we figure that out is we go to the Gospels. And we don't know exactly how accurate because, and that's the other thing we need to know, if we really read the Gospels, you will see that they contradict one another in a number of different places. The Bible does it throughout, so that's why you can't read it as literal anyway. But there's a general feel for the Gospels. And now I'm not talking about Book of Revelation now. I'm talking about the Gospels. Because the Book of Revelation is a totally different thing. We'll talk about that another time. But the Gospels are all about Jesus is saying, love one another. When the Pharisees ask him what's the law because he's out preaching and they, they're trying to catch him up, right? He says, he says, they say to him, what is the law? And he says, well... He says, the law is these two things. Love the Lord thy God with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy heart. And the second is like unto it, love thy brother, love thy neighbor, depending on translation, as thyself. And then he says, and these, on these two hang all the law and the prophets. Now, if you didn't, don't know, the law and the prophets are the, the, the Hebrew Bible. The law is the beginning the books of, book of Moses, I mean, all the, the books that come in the beginning, those are the law, okay? And then all the books that have names of people that come after, those are the prophets. And so when he says, on these two hang all the law and the prophets, he's saying the entire Hebrew Bible, which we sometimes call the Old Testament, it hangs on these two things. Love God, 
Love your neighbor. And he says it's the same thing. He actually says, love the Lord thy God. And the second is like unto it, love thy neighbor. So like unto it, meaning kind of the same. Not exactly the same, but kind of the same. Right? So this is it. This is, and he's saying this is, the, this is the whole law. Well, they don't know what the heck to think about that when he says that. But this, so this is the thinking of Jesus. The thinking of Jesus is give love. That's it. Take care of the poor. Treat one another well. Forgive. Forgive sin. In other words, anytime you think you see sin, forgive it. This is the Christ consciousness. So this is what's born. It's a symbol, okay? It's a symbol. You can do it anytime you want. It doesn't have to be Christmas. You know, Christmas Eve, go to midnight mass and then decide, you know, okay, this is it. Christ born anew, but born in you anytime that you get ready. It's convenient, though. It's convenient. It's Christmas. Let's remember it on Christmas. It's great. We're celebrating. We're celebrating the Christ. We're going to see it being born in us anew. And, re, and, and another cool thing about the symbol is to say, I'm going to release the whole past year that's just passed, where maybe I didn't, where probably I didn't exemplify the Christ in every area of my life. I'm going to release all of that, and I'm going to allow this to be born in me again so that I can try again, so I can put some focus on this and try again. So, so it's Christmas, and there's presents under the tree. And this is great because there's, this, this, it's powerful. It's symbols. Don't, don't, I, I don't ever want to get to the place where I think that it's not important to like get stuff for people and give it to them. As it, but it, I need to remember what it is that it's a symbol of the love that Jesus was teaching. It is a symbol. I'm going to give you this to exemplify, to I'm going to give you this to symbolize the love that I have for you. I'm, tr I'm going to try to get it out of my mind that it's Christmas and let me make sure that I get everybody on the list so nobody's offended. And so, now, but, but you know what? This is important too. The reason we want to try to include everybody, right, is we want everybody to feel good. We want, we want, we're sharing. We want everybody to feel good. Uh, it's not quite as altruistic when we are thinking that the reason we want to make sure we get everybody on the list is so